Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here today and I am going to walk you through a little technique I've discovered or happened upon to do these, you know, uh, property boundaries for real estate videos, which a lot of people are asking about and there's not a lot of options to do them yourself. Everyone's got to, you know, buy into some software which doesn't give you a lot of tweaking ability and it may not be that robust. Uh, so I'm going to show you how you can do that in Apple Motion, which if you're working in Final Cut Pro is something that I really think you should have and hopefully everyone who does work in Final Cut Pro does have. And so, you know, we're just going to walk through the process of how you get something that works a little bit like this. So, you know, we have the uh, animation start in and then it's going to build out. We had some, you know, color in opacity in there and uh, you know, just a good smooth animation and that is something that I think most of your real estate clients are going to be pretty pleased with um, you know oftentimes when I do this I'll have a little disclaimer but this is for the purposes of uh, you know just showing you something on YouTube so we're going to get right down to it just so you know we are working on an Apple M1 Mac Mini which, uh, you know, I actually just realized in going to do this video that it doesn't have standard mic input, so I am using some lower quality sound off of a webcam. I hope you don't mind. The only software we are using is Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion. Everything we are doing is completely built into the system. Now, having said that, it would be nice to make an automatic tracker that you can just use in Final Cut Pro. You don't have to come to Motion, but I don't believe that this kind of thing is going to publish too well. Uh, and it's nice to be able to come in here and do some some fine-tuning So without further ado, let's get into it Okay, so we had the project here. I'm just gonna unlock a few things um, This is actually like the second or third time I tried to record this, you know, just it wasn't The tracking was just holding me up and I wanted to get a better system before I showed you how to do it So we are going to delete this delete this oh, actually let's just double check one thing what ended up being the one that works yeah okay we're gonna delete that uh, and delete this now starting with having your footage in the timeline I've already selected a good part but let's say that you just drag this in you're starting with uh, this is at one and let's say your video is starting at one um, Tracking can be a little bit of a pain, so it's always good to work only with the parts of the footage you absolutely intend to use in your video. So just remember to maybe you have a transition happening. Remember to leave a little bit of frames for that. And, uh, you know, ideally you don't have to speed ramp because that adds a lot of frames for your tracking purposes, which are, are not going to be fully... Uh, you know, consumed at their full resolution and, and the effort that it's going to take to get them there. So we're going to find a good spot. Um, let's start right around here. Okay, so I'm making up uh, imaginary property boundaries today for the purpose of this video. We just have a nice clip. It's open bare land, pretty consistent with what you might see. And we have some, some usable tracking point areas here. All right. So we just want to make sure that whatever we intend to use in a tracking point is going to be in the video for the duration. Okay, and let's just terminate this right here because 120 frames at 24 frames a second is, you know, five seconds. Uh, we can go. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, we've got our footage placed. This is 4K video footage. I'm working in a 4K timeline. Now one thing that I realized in doing this before was I was sizing down the footage to match a uh, 1080 project with 4K footage. That is throwing off the tracking in a way that makes our life more complicated and also takes a while to figure out what's happening. So I recommend that you, you know, if you're working from 4K drone footage, you export Final Cut Pro down to a 1080 size first before you bring it in here. Or you work in 4K, which provides you more accurate tracking information. However, it will probably be a little slower on your computer to track. Uh, I'm opting to keep the information, have a better track. 
So we are going to start with this Bezier curve and at frame number one we want to pick four points that are going to outline our property boundaries. Well if it's a box, if you have a weird shape you know you're going to need more points and that is going to complicate your efforts because you, you know you're going to see how challenging it can be to track four points and then um, if you're tracking 12 or you know you can have a lot of points on, on some of these big complicated farm properties I've shot, that's for sure. Uh, we're not going to focus on the style of the boundaries yet, so we're just going to make it so we can see what's happening underneath. We have these lines for our reference right now. So Bezier curve, we'll leave it at that for now. Now let's go to the library and we are going to draw, uh, get a behavior for shapes Bezier shape we have here and it is going to be track points. We're going to drag that up on there. Now back to inspector. We are mimicking the source and this was one one problem I found was the attach versus mimic when you had a downsized frame from 4k to 1080. We won't get into it now but just trust me that it's easier this way for uh, tracking challenges. Now in here we're going to look at tracking points one by one. Okay. and we're just going to change a few of their features. Okay. There we go. Okay, so we want to make sure we got some good high contrast spots to track and we also want to make sure that there's lots of extra detail in that area. So let's go yeah, right about there. Okay, so we're going to track a spot where there's a curve, a hump in this ground. We got a transition from darker green to lighter green. And, you know, between this, there's a signpost here and there's uh, this corner here. I think that's going to be pretty good. We've given a track size changes what you can see in here. And that's what the software is going to be keeping track of to keep the point uh, in its place. Now, so we're just going to work down, this one you can see is a little less obvious where it belongs. So let's look for, and there's a, I know there's a good rock over here I was using for a track point. Here we go. So that one, pretty easy to hold on to. And since we're making arbitrary property lines, this is good. Uh, for a regular property video, you may in the bottom corner have a property boundaries approximated for exactly the reasons you're going to see is that it can be really hard to get a real property boundary on, let's say, those two pixels. So finding something that's pretty close to give a sense of the scale of the property is what we are going for here. Um, okay, so that one tracking size doesn't have to change. This one this one can pose a problem because we don't have a lot of work, uh, you know, options to operate off of here. So we just want to put that like that and track. Now I know that this rock becomes very big later in the video. So I am going to, to have a better chance of tracking this curve inside of this big bright curve. We're going to make this a little bigger as well. Now we are basically ready to do the track. But um, with these all in place, we're going to lock them in. Okay, position, lock them in. Okay, and then we did something like this last time where we kind of go back and kind of make sure that we, we tell the software where we hope that it ends. it may do a better job at staying on target in the very first place. So, those are now locked in. Okay, and from here, we are going to go analyze and hope for the best. All right. So we're, we're really paying attention to where these keyframes are attached. Try not to worry about the box because it seems to be updated more slowly than the rest of what's actually happening. Now this is our graph editor. Uh, all of these lines are the keyframes being drawn frame by frame and if they all look like they have similar motion paths happening in them, that's a good sign because that means, you know, this is 
all from the same camera so they should all have the same motion profile and it should only change based on their perspective to the camera so as one point is closer its keyframes are going to look different than a point that we were tracking perhaps further away uh, so right now you can see we've started and we finished on basically all all the good points we get to supervise if we run into any sort of issues. So I'm just gonna jog back and you can keep an eye on how much this little arrow moves around in relation to, you know, perhaps this corner, perhaps that little thing in this curve. So let's just have a look. Okay, so a little bit. Um, oh yeah, it's doing pretty darn good there, isn't it? Okay, track two, that's a good one. This one should be pretty much right on the money the entire time. You know, you just see the rock getting bigger as we get closer to it, so that's why the perspective changes. Uh, now there's another software I use for tracking, and this is actually a pretty new tracking in Apple Motion, but there's not a lot of coverage on it, so I thought I'd show it. You know, it's no surprise that this has become a popular question for people to have. So yeah, we're jogging back through this one. This one's all grass, so it would be the most challenging to track. But if, you know, let's just keep an eye on these, see if they move in relation to what we have there. And they're looking pretty darn, pretty darn good. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Um, and how about this one? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so we have a really sufficient track. That is a great first step. Now what we can do next, you know, this is really the hard part. The next part is just making it look good and everyone's gonna have their own style, but I'm gonna show you mine. Uh, in the shape, let's go with, you know, I like sometimes using this cyan kind of color. On my property outlines, I feel like it can be complementary to outside views. And, you know, I mean, red is, is good too. Red is, you know, stand out and a lot of realtors sometimes expect red, but I think you can make things your own sometimes as well. Um, so we're going to bump up the line width, like to have a nice pronounced line of the boundaries, and then a little bit of shading inside, you know, and you can obviously do what you wish. Um, and then we're going to animate this. So one way to do that is, let's say this is where we want our animation to at its finish point to look like, around 18 frames in on, a, I believe I set up a 24 frame per second timeline. We can make a keyframe here for both of these. Let's go, last point, boom, boom, and boom. Okay, and then we can go over here and do the same thing before we start fading the, doing the fade out animation. Okay, fade out starts there. All right, so from the first frame, we are going to drop this down to zero. This last point offset will be at zero as well. And there we go. So, you know, right now they're happening at the same time. Sometimes I try not to have a lot happening at the same time, so I might draw the outline, and then as the outline approaches the very finish line here, we might start bringing the opacity back. But you know, just uh, we're having two keyframes here. It makes it easier on your little graph editor here to see what's happening. If you ever want to read time stuff, is overlaying your, your keyframes. Uh, and then over here, let's have this. We're going to go first point all set, and that's just going to draw a close. Beep. And that's now complete. Uh, and then we can also drop our opacity back to zero. And then we have a nice opening and closing animation. Now if we want to get rid of these viewing lines, let's uh, click like that and so we made a lock so it's not going to let us see that stuff and now let's play it back. Um, one thing I do want to do, let's turn the graph editor back on, on this Bezier curve. I don't like when the animation starts right away. I like to give it a little bit of time. Uh, okay, so let's try that. Now, lock it in again. Yep, okay, good. And you know, that animation is a tiny bit fast and abrupt. We could drag that out, obviously, but you get the picture how easy it is to just, you know, 
four keyframes for animating the style of it and mostly automated keyframes as far as keeping it in place. And look at how solid that is sitting there. So that is, uh, you know, tried to make it concise, but that is how you get property boundaries tracked in Final Cut Pro and Apple Motion for your real estate video projects. Um, I've got lots of other videos on the way. Hopefully you can leave a subscribe, maybe find something else on the channel that you might like to watch along these lines. I'm making lots more videos for real estate marketing. Uh, that's photographers, videographers, drone operators, floor plan, you know, that kind of stuff, and even some things that are helpful for realtors as well. So looking forward to coming back and talking to you some more. Thanks.